Hello, and welcome back to the Unscripted Podcast. We have a lot to talk about today. The doc is filled with lots of interesting stories. Can't wait. Um, I guess let's address the elephant in the room. My voice. It's a little horse. Um, little pony. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we just came back from a trip. Um, if you follow us on social media, you'll see that we posted a lot that we were out in Big Sur and um, the weather was super nice out there. Very cold, but also very drastic from the weather we have at home. So I think that is kind of what got me sick. Um, I just like my I had a sore throat earlier, which has gone away, but it's like affected my voice and I have a runny nose. So it's nothing serious. It's just um, it's just that. So bear with me on that. <clears throat> but how are you? I feel fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Incredible. Okay. Don't rub it in now. <laughs> so what did you have for me today? You you had me off the socials for a little bit. Not off the socials, but you didn't. Yeah. You told me to stay away from all that drama. So <laughs> <laughs> Sounds serious. It's funny. No, um well the way we've been doing the show, I've been asking you to stay away from like the the headlines going around with like the celebrity drama. Just so that I can I don't know, I, I figured the best way to do it was so that I could do my research and then inform you on the topic. Maybe we'll switch that that around at some point, but yeah, I don't know. I just want to get your like uh, raw, genuine reaction, I guess. Um, but for that, we have um, we're talking about the whole Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher thing going on, um, and that is gonna that's gonna be our main segment because I went down a huge rabbit hole. Is way more than just because they wrote character letters. We'll get into it later. It's way more like I went down a rabbit hole. I can't lie. I saw the apology video. Oh, that's fine. That's that's all I saw. Though. Okay. I don't know anything else. Okay. That's fine. Well, we will get into that. But um, some top of the show things. First of all, um, the last episode, I think, we completely forgot to touch on the winner of the thrifted challenge. Oh, um, oh I already know the answer. Okay, but we didn't tell the audience. Then, Maybe guess, they yeah. don't know. Um, but as you can see from your reaction, a little, <laughs> it's a bit of a sore subject. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, you guys know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was the winner. Um, it was, it was like sixty-three percent to whatever. I don't know. I'll throw it up on the screen. We both looked very cute. But I won. So give me my Congrats. flowers. Thank Congrats. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, we did just come back from a trip. So I wanted to talk about that because we were there for um, four days. And it was a long road trip. Eight hours. Um 16 hour round trip. So. 16 hour round trip, yeah. You were driving the whole way <laughs> and <laughs> back. So yeah. how was that like for you? <clears throat> it wasn't too bad. It was it was kind of like a scenic route there and back, so it was kind of fun. And I like driving too, so Mhm. Mm it wasn't too bad. I I was a little scared that I'd get like really sleepy and tired, but that didn't really happen. On the way back either, right? No, not really. Not really. <laughs> Sorry, I just remembered. Um, on the way back home, <laughs> you were driving with your glasses on, your sunglasses <laughs> on. And it was already like 7.30, 8 o'clock, so the sun was going down. The sun was basically already down at this point. And I'm like, I'm like telling him, oh, it's so nice that we got like basically back home already before the sun's completely down. And we didn't have to drive like so long of a period in and the dark. And saying that... I was I had my shades on, so it looked dark outside. I was like, mm hmm yeah. Yeah. And then a couple minutes passed, and then he realized that you had your sunglasses on, and it was hilarious. And I was also like, 
um, you're gonna have to take the steering wheel because I'm getting a little bit of, of astigmatism. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was really just because of the glasses, the shades. Yeah. We're making it. It's a so lot funny. worse. <laughs> then when I took them off, I was like, wow. Yeah, I couldn't I believe I that yeah. you. I couldn't even believe that. that <laughs> I don't even know how long I was. I was driving like that. <laughs> that was funny. But yeah, going back to the drive uh, on the way to the trip, it wasn't it wasn't bad on the way there. It wasn't bad on the way back either. But I guess just the excitement was probably fueling us more on the way there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did feel shorter almost. It felt quick. Yeah, yeah, it felt quick. We actually filmed a podcast on mm-hmm. the way there, yeah. like halfway there. Um, sort of. Sort of. Well, we did, but it, we didn't finish it. But um, it's because I realized like halfway through that I was like this footage is not good <laughs> um because I have a I have a tripod type of thing uh, a tripod mount on the dashboard of our car and um it it doesn't like screw all the way so it is stable but like because the road is so you know ro- wobbly and rocky and all that like the camera was like you know shaking and it just it wasn't good it wasn't up to my standards and i didn't want to do that i don't i don't want to do that to you and i don't want to do that in general so yeah i figured that we would have a lot more to talk about after the trip anyway so yes and we do and we do the the place we went to was big sir um we stayed there in the cabin (laughs) 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 we go to big sir (laughs) we stay cabin Mm-hmm. We take big dog. We have fun. <laughs> um, so now that we're not there anymore, we can finally say we went to Big Sur. We stayed at a campground over there and rented out a cabin. Um, it was really nice. Um, we took Blue with us. Um, and it was really fun and beautiful out there. Mm-hmm. We would really recommend everyone go over there. Definitely, definitely. We actually got... Um, our cabin upgraded oh yeah that um, was that was clutch right there that was really nice um the cabin was beautiful the campground was beautiful everything was beautiful there like everywhere you like everywhere you look you could find beauty i like when we were walking um at pfeiffer state park we went on a hike and there was that that like really pretty um bridge that we walked on and there was just like um a spider web Oh, that, that one, yeah. On the bridge, and the sunlight was peeking through it, and it was really pretty. <laughs> um, I don't think that they can hear that, but Zoe's wilding out yeah. right now. Um, she gets excited when she eats food, and <laughs> and she plays with it, and that's what that sound was. Um, also, the dogs aren't here, you know, in your view this oh, time yeah. around. It oh, just, that's true. I didn't even realize. Yeah. Do that this time. Yeah, it's just... Um, easier <laughs> that way <laughs> truly um so maybe next time maybe next time yeah. yeah it's just we're still figuring things out you know we stayed there for a short amount of time but like everything that we did was really nice the first day that we went we traveled along the highway the the coast line and there was like a bunch of um photo ops what the hell oh, oh maybe blue Choco's right i mean there. yeah maybe he's right there yeah um there was a bunch of like bridges and you could see the ocean and it was just so beautiful um we also went on hiking trails we stopped into carmel by the sea um super cute town dog friendly got some coffee Mm -hmm. looked at the gift shops went to restaurants there ate with blue a lot of people Mm -hmm. (laughs) wanted to pet him he was not feeling it he is gaining an attitude because He's around the little dogs who are super feisty, and so he's becoming a big bee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bee, bee is, is becoming, becoming a, a big bee, bee. yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So it was funny. We were at the restaurant, and um, one particular restaurant, and this guy actually comes up to us at the table, and he's like, oh, can I pet your dog? And then Blue is a big dog, so he has a he's really... Like, I love Great Danes. He has a really deep growl, like super scary like demon like and the guy's like maybe not <laughs> he walks away and i was like uh, yeah maybe not honestly I that's what i was gonna think tell him too like yeah i don't think so because like 
just before then, I think like three people passed by, pretty much wanting to pet him also, and he was just growling at them. So when yeah. he came up and he was just saying like, "Oh, I love Great Danes. I want to pet him." Can I? I was just about to say, um, I don't. And then he growled, so, and he just walked away. Yeah, like, he scared not. him away. <laughs> he also did that to an old lady the oh. the other time we were eating. She looked scared. She looked like she was gonna pass away. Yeah, she just like, she was in shock. She couldn't move. It was sad. Yeah, she was too stunned to speak. Yeah. But. That reminds me of all the funny things that people <laughs> said about him oh, every time. Yeah. People are so, like, I it's the it, older like, generation, though. I, I get it, though, because, like, you don't see a dog like that often, you know? And maybe, like, out there. I get it, but the point I'm trying to make is that us, as the younger generation, would never go up to someone that had a dog like Blue or Great Dane or a big dog and be like, oh, you brought your horse with you. Like, mm, we would never yeah. say that. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the distinction that I'm trying to make. Because the the young people that we did encounter that saw him and were, like, in awe of him, they were like, oh, like, they were smiling. Yeah, a beautiful and, dog. Yeah. But, like, kept the distance. Yeah, they, and they were up. just, like, you know, like, oh, look, like, talking to their partner or whatever. Like, look at him, whatever. Yeah. But, like, all the older people, the fucking boomers were like, you brought your horse with you. And, like, um oh, I see you brought a pony or something like that. And um, you couldn't find a bigger dog? Like, <laughs> oh, shut up. It's funny. No, it no, is funny. funny. I, I, <laughs> I'm i not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. It's just it's funny. Like, everywhere we go with him, we get attention because mm-hmm. he's so big and he's just like a – he's an, another person. Yeah. Yeah. So traveling with a dog of that size was the first time we've ever done that. So that was – yeah, that's true. A challenge. On its own. Yeah. Um, it was good. He was good for the most part. It's just he's freaking huge and he's he's kind of annoying. And he's a puppy still. He like people were putting that out too. Yeah. He has like very big puppy energy and puppies are annoying. Like puppies mm-hmm. are cute, but puppies are annoying. And imagine a big ass puppy, like a puppy that's like right in your face. Like, imagine Clifford. Like, basically not as, not as big but basically that's <laughs> what it feels like um so yeah but i mean like he was great during the car ride the traveling part he was great um turn your sound off yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking have it tracker <laughs> um <laughs> yeah he did great um but yeah oh i did want to share um a tour of our cabin because oh, yeah, that, yeah, was that, was, that was fun. Um, so let's... that only took one tape. Thank that, you for that, pointing that, was, that out. Yeah, that was really impressive. Thank you for pointing that you out. Just, you just <laughs> spat that out. Um, you like just hey, just record me. I'm gonna open the door, and then that's all you said. And then you just listen. You I just had a vision. It. I had a vision, and you and executed it. Thank you. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have to give you your flowers. You know. You know, I appreciate that. <clears throat> Let's watch this. Hey, come on in. Let me show you around. So this is Kevin Seven. Welcome. The vibes in here are great. Here is where we hung our bags and our outfit for each morning. This nice bed here is great. Comfy, cozy, very warm. We have a cobija right here. Super warm for this cold weather. Here is where we kept blue. Here is our table where we eat. I cooked many a meals here on a burner stove. Windows that open up. You can see what's going on every morning. Hello world, is what I would sometimes say. Beautiful river that outlooks right here. Great view. We have my nightstand right here. Beautiful painting, lovely. This nice mirror. Oh, hi there. Below it we have a um, heater, nice and toasty. We have a fridge, a freezer, our recycling and our trash bin, a coffee pot, 
two mugs. We also had tea and coffee bags. Didn't use them, but that's great. Then we have our bathroom. Nice and woodsy, cozy, cutesy. We have our shower. You know, standard stuff, not nothing state of the art, but very warm water. Lovely mirror. I love the the accents of the wood, the shelving and all the cabinets. You can see our neighbors over here. Hi neighbor. Another window. And our toilet seat. So that's that. Uh, I guess you should be on your way now because um, we got to get going. So don't let the door hit you on the way out, friend. Okay, here we go. Bye bye. Take care. It's nice to watch that video again. Kind of took me back. I know. I miss it already. I want to go back. I mean, I remembered also. Um, <laughs> Blue trying to get up those stairs the, oh. the first day. <laughs> he was really scared. Uh, was it that same day, too, where we went? No. I think that was the second day where we went to the restaurant. Yeah, it was the second and day. he the, slid down the stairs off when he... Did you... you the third day. Him, no. Because I, I started recording him after he started going down the next flight. But by then, he was like... He realized he needs yeah. to move his feet. <laughs> but he... Yeah, he slid down the stairs. <laughs> he <laughs> looked like, so funny. Stairs. Yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah, he had to learn how to climb stairs that um, trip because he didn't know how. But I would say he was an expert now. Mm -hmm. Well, he's still kind of yeah, goofy he, and clumsy. He's, yeah, he's a goofy ass dude. Yeah. But that was a little bit of our trip. We came back a couple days ago now. Time is going by so fast. So fast, dude. And I... You know, I was worried about that, too. I was like, time is going by so fast when we're at home. And I was like, please don't let it go by fast while we're over there. And like it did and it didn't. Yeah. But now that we're we're back home, time's just speeding back up again. And it's crazy. It was nice, though. Do you, do you feel a little bit better coming back? Like, Because I know before that you were like dying to leave. Oh. You were feeling burnt out and whatnot. Well, I was, too. Do I feel less burnt out yeah <laughs> you feel like yeah i'm not feeling like you was super a good no it was good yeah it was a good nice getaway i was telling you like every chance i got when we were well we were in nature like the whole time but mm -hmm. i was just like the woods like i love the woods i love the beach and so we were in both of those areas that whole trip and so my soul was happy my soul was fed it was beautiful it was very beautiful okay so let's dive into this Mila Kunis Ashton Kutcher deep dive because it's a lot more than just them writing character letters. It's deeper and it gets it gets crazy. So for preface, um all this is happening right now because Danny Masterson, um who Or Hyde from the who played Hyde in that seventies show. Um was recently convicted uh, and sentenced to 30 years to life in prison for the SA of two out of five women. That took place when he was at the height of his career. Um, During the show. Doing that 70s show. Yeah. So he was also convicted of drugging these women um, and committing the acts on them. And so also, sorry, trigger warning before... I should have mentioned that. A quick rundown before we get started because I didn't know a lot of the details about the, the case mm. um, and about like what he did. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but but yeah, just um, there was three of five alleged victims and they were all Scientologists. You know what Scientology is? Um, Like the religion? Scientology? Yeah, some people say it's a religion. Some people say it's a, a cult. Oh, yeah. All of the victims you're saying? All of the victims and Danny. Danny and his family, he was raised in Scientology since he was a kid. Oh, okay. um, so the other two accusers were Chrissy Carnell Bixler and Bobette Realis. They all, they both previously dated him as well. 
So he wasn't charged with five counts because two of the women's cases had insufficient evidence and statutes of limitations. And was it those two you just mentioned? I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. Um, it might have been, but I'm not sure. I, I think I did see that um, one of the women, I'm sure it might have been one of them because mm-hmm. I saw that um, one of the women that didn't like, um, like they couldn't charge him for that mm-hmm. crime was because he was dating her. Oh, well, they said that that's dumb. it like the lines were like blurred because he was dating her and, and they couldn't prove if it was consensual or not. Wow. Yeah. So um, what's tough about um, SA crimes is that like it's super hard to get a conviction mm-hmm. because you need a lot of evidence or else it turns into like a he said she said and and so kind of like with like uh cases of defamation and stuff like that you have to have a lot of proof and a lot of evidence so yeah so that means that there was a lot and he did get convicted for those wow. two crimes so good and that's actually amazing 30 years to life is actually amazing considering he's a celebrity that's true considering he i, I don't know if he's white but i mean he's white passing mm-hmm. um he's a man you know like he has all these advantages, especially his his fame, and he's still got 30 years to life. That's awesome. I feel like a lot of essay cases, um, usually they don't get long sentencing. Yeah. Like that especially one guy. Especially they're, like, famous. Especially. Like that one guy, um, what was his name? Well, fuck him. It doesn't matter what his <laughs> name is. Um, but he was that one famous essay case that happened at like Harvard or a college and he got caught in oh, the act okay. yeah he got caught in the act doing it and he only got the like friend. three years or something yeah it was like super famous and he was white of course and he only got like three years or like or or so, maybe not even that because I remember them saying like he's a student he's never had any past offenses yeah, that's like that's he, he, got off he has a bright he future yeah. uh-huh because he had a clean like record so it was which is first so time, stupid so. But yeah, so that's just a little bit of background. And also he will not be eligible for parole until he's 77. So this guy is going to hopefully rot in jail. Wow. So all that happened. Um, and as happens in, in cases, um, the judge will ask for character letters of anyone who wants to like stick up for the person and defend them and speak to their character and who they are and maybe like sway them into thinking that they're a better person, whatever. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, a lot of people wrote character letters for Danny, including um, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, um, Kitty and Red Foreman, the actors that played them. They Uh also did it. I did include their um, letters of support I haven't read them. Who's um Ashton and Mila's? Because yeah, those are the only them. people that we're gonna be really talking about today. Um. So let me just skim through it. This is Ashton Kutcher's. Um, he's he says I'm an actor, investor, philanthropist, and most importantly, a father. I met Masterson when I was 20 years old. He instantly became a friend to me, a friend, dedicated coworker, and role model to me. And he has remained such for 25 years. Um, He's saying that he's a positive influence. He's extraordinarily honest and intentional human being. He doesn't ever recall him lying to him. He taught him how to be direct and confront issues. Um, He's consistently there for you. He couldn't. They've traveled around the world together, raised daughters together and shared countless moments. And he's lucky to have him as a good friend and the kind of brother others would be lucky to have is basically in short basically just gassing him up for no reason Mm. Mila Kunis says some of the same things Um, she says I believe it is essential to share the remarkable influence Danny has had on my life and others Uh, from the very beginning I could sense his innate goodness and genuine nature He's proven to be an amazing friend, confident, above all, an older brother figure to me. Whatever. It's honestly not even worth reading because it's all bullshit anyways. 
Um, but you get the point. <clears throat> They're basically just vouching for him, saying he's a good person. Um, and yeah, so shortly after the new they the news broke that they wrote character letters, um, they started receiving a lot of backlash and hate. And for I it. actually heard, saw that Christina Ricci Ricci mm-hmm. also um, called them out on it. No, mm-hmm. I think I saw that. Yeah, I saw people like Christina Ricci Ricci. Um, Kathy Griffin. Um, that's the only She's people I can think. Right? Yeah, that's the only people I can think off the top of my head. But they shared. Um, they called them out, and they were also like sharing their support to the victims. Yeah. Also, Topher Grace, the guy who Ooh, played yeah. um, Eric Foreman, and his wife also said that they stand with the victims and and all that. Um, as they should. As they should. So, like I said, after the backlash started pouring in. They came out with an apology video. Can you play it for me? The pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. I don't know why this like makes my blood boil. It makes me angry. I I heard, I read a tweet actually that said that you can hear the clicking to like because they were reading it off supposedly. Uh huh. I I wasn't paying attention, so I didn't. I, I didn't hear that, but um, but I do feel like it was very rehearsed. It didn't feel to me. It didn't feel genuine. It didn't feel like an apology to me. It felt like an explanation. I feel like they're. I think that I don't know what was going through their heads. I don't know if they if they thought that it wasn't gonna the character letters weren't gonna be public knowledge because historically they usually are so i think they maybe thought that the the character letters were gonna be sealed and that nobody would find out historically they are sealed yeah no no historically they're public so i think that i don't know maybe that they just thought that this case is like high profile like so dealing with celebrities so maybe the letters would be sealed Mm. um maybe that's why they were caught off guard because from a PR move, why would you want to tie your name to, to an R wordist and to all this shit? And it's just like, oh, it infuriates me. <laughs> it really makes me mad because like <clears throat> it's giving like he was always a good person to me energy. I fucking hate people like that. I fucking hate you. <laughs> like, come on. It's just so like invalidating to the victims and they're saying like oh we never intentionally wanted to to harm them like okay i guess of course yeah like whatever but but in doing so in sticking up for him and trying to defend him you're trying to get him a lesser sentence you're you're trying to help him out you're trying to help him out you're trying you know what i mean like if he doesn't get convicted he's gonna end up doing it again and hurting more women and it's just like how could you do that i just want to point out that like mila's tone i don't know why it's just like super defensive she's just like we support victims blah blah blah, blah. like one it sounds rehearsed two it sounds super defensive it does sound three good. i feel like <laughs> after they stopped recording they were like and scene it felt very like scripted like they're actors so i felt like her being like we support victims and like being like super defensive was like her putting on a like a a show i don't know i it just felt like it was a character yeah it felt like really weird to me and it's su- it sucks because i always liked these two yeah we did one of the victims that i mentioned earlier chrissy bixler is gonna be the main person that i'm gonna be referencing mm-hmm. my face is like hot i don't know if it's because i'm like getting a fever or like <laughs> <laughs> or if i'm just that just heated <laughs> i don't know but i'm like literally <laughs> hot um so she's going to be the main victim because she's been really outspoken on on Instagram lately. Like I've been following 
um, her Instagram because she's been posting a lot on her stories, like dragging people, like dragging people. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about Chrissy. So Chrissy dated Danny from 1995 to 2002, and she actually appeared on the show a couple of times Mm -hmm. um, as a guest. And so she was on set a lot with the cast. So she got to know them. She got to know them um, a lot during her time there. When she found out about these character letters, she took to Instagram to release a statement of her own. She says, Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your role model keeps for you, ones that would end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night that you called Danny on February 21st, 2001. I heard everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your quote-unquote mentor. Dear Mila, I pray you begin to process what you experienced as a child on that set. Your interviews, your old interviews are very telling. I encourage everyone to watch them and decide for yourself what you hear and see. Do so before they get scrubbed from the internet. I also know what happened in Toronto and after. Question, if that's what you view as a normal relationship with a big brother figure, then I feel very sad for you, and I hope you consider getting into therapy. You all must forget I was there the whole time those first five years of that 70s show. I remember everything. Wow. So she is not coming to fucking play, right? right? She's coming for blood, and I love it. So lots of things were said, very cryptic message. Mm-hmm. it's like what do you but know it's, it's like it's giving it's i love it like i she's in her villain era and i love it like she's trying i'm here for her i'm rooting for her i love her mm-hmm. i don't even know her and i love her but let's first start with her message to mila so she said that she encouraged everyone to look up her old interviews which is very telling um did you, did you i did that? she also actually um posted some of the clips later on to her Instagram to show people exactly the interviews that she was talking about, mm. um, which was great. So a lot of the stuff that she was referencing, the old interviews are just very inappropriate between Mila and Ashton and Mila and Danny. Um, if you remember, Mila mm-hmm. was 14 years old when she started that 70 show okay. and Ashton was um, 19 or 20. Let's just watch the video. Go ahead and click. You know what's funny is when she was she was 14 when we started the show, I was like 19, right? Right. And they're like, okay, you guys are going to be making out in this scene. And I'm like thinking like, wait, this is like slightly illegal, right? I was going to say, that's right? probably your first kiss ever, right? It was my first kiss. Why is someone bet you made with Danny about our first kiss? No, it wasn't the first <laughs> kiss. It was no, like the second ahead. or third kiss. It was the first, it was like the first week. No, it was not the first week. Whatever. Let me tell you what All happened. Right, no, let no, me tell no, you what happened. No, no, okay. Yeah. I've never kissed yeah. a guy. So okay. I was, I was so. I mean, you know, Ash was attractive, and yeah. I was a fourteen-year-old little girl, and I was extremely scared for my life. Sure. And it, he, he was very girl. nice about it. He was like, "Oh, don't worry." So I was like, "Okay." Then Danny goes and goes, "Dude, I'll give you ten dollars if you French kiss her." What would you stick my stick your tongue in my mouth or some? What? No, 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 no. Oh, ten dollars. You're making it sound like it was like really. Uh, it, okay, Dan, we had a little side bet yeah, going. Yeah. Like, which was? It wasn't very As to whether or not you know, like you know, you're kissing on the show or boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. You would use tongue, right, Rosie? I, I mean, you would. You, it depends what kind of an actor you are. I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? yeah. So Danny bets me like 20 bucks that I wouldn't do it. And of course I'm like, yeah, sure, what's the deal? And then the cops showed up and you got arrested him pretty much. They should have, but they did. He never did it. They They should have. So that's basically it. But just like super weird and gross behavior. Just the fact that they were like taking bets and stuff and speed inappropriate. Like who would like, she's 14 years old and you're going to like dare your friend to make out with her. It's weird. It's really weird. Um, but then you can go to the next video. This one. This is when Mila's 15 and Ashton's 21. According to um, Chrissy's Instagram story, she said 21. I but I believe he might be 20 here. I'm not exactly sure. Either way, he's a full blown adult. And she's a child. Hi, my name is Mila Chris, and I'm from Mass Show, and you're watching um, In the Crease. Hi, I'm Ashton Kutcher, and I'm from That 70 Show TV. No, That 70 Show yeah, too. Yeah. But and the reason I'm doing this is not because I think In the Crease is good, but because Josh told me Mila would sit on my lap if I. Did. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? In the Crease is good, but because Josh told me Mila would sit on my lap if I. Did. <laughs> Josh, 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 Josh. He said, "You didn't hear him." No. He said, 
Hi, I'm Ashley Kutcher, and I'm here because Josh told me, whoever said that, um, if I was here, Mila would sit on my lap. Mm. Good, good, Josh, don't think Mila would sit on my lap if I did. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> like, he could have just stopped there. He could have just stopped at the that she would sit on my lap and it could have been, it still would have been inappropriate, but like it wouldn't have been weird. But then like he starts like almost like making her grind on him Mm -hmm. and it's fucking weird. Like it's he's like, this feels good. Yeah. And like you, he's joking, but he's also like telling the truth. Oh, you know what? I did see that, that punked one. It it made me think of that. punk. Yeah. I didn't have the um, exact clip, but there was a clip that surfaced, um, from Ashton Kutcher's punk days where he was talking inappropriately about Hillary Duff um, and the Olsen twins saying that um, Hillary Duff is another one of those actresses that everyone can't wait to turn 18. So gross. Um, Disgusting. Also, speaking of pranked, punked, um, also that whole thing with just Justin Long and Jonah Hill did you hear about that? Yeah. Clips were surfaced from an old episode where they were buying underage girls drinks. And it was like a funny, cute little prank. Like we caught them in the oh, act punk. doing that. Yeah. So they were like that. They were. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, but they were like serious, seriously trying to buy it for them. Um, and like hang out with them or, or just... maybe, I don't know. They showed, I don't know if the, I don't know if they were actresses, the girls. Oh. Cause from what I remember, they showed up to the restaurant with the girls. So it, it was just a very weird situation in general. But um, it's just funny because apparently Ashton said that there were a lot of episodes that they had to completely destroy because they were so bad that he didn't want anyone to see the light of they, He didn't want them to see the light of day. Wow. And so it's like that one got posted and that's inappropriate buying underage girls yeah. drinks. And so like what else did he catch? You know what I mean? So he's just yeah. around a lot of like shady shit. That brings us to another interview. You can click on that with Danny and Mila. I didn't Working know. With me. Yeah, and she was as hot as she was. You know, come on. This one. 14. 14, she was even hotter. But I'm not allowed to say that. Have you guys learned a lot from this acting job? Wow. And she was know. hotter because she was younger. That's what he was saying, yeah. Just another weird thing about, uh, like, the culture on the set of that 70s show is that, like, the writers made her kiss almost every single guy on the show except for toe for grace Mm. and so it's just weird there's an interview right there we don't have to watch it but she was basically getting um on an interview saying like yeah it's weird like they made me out to be like the slutty character and i've i've had to kiss every single guy on the show um except for topher and he the interviewer was like but that's so wrong she's like it is it's so wrong she's like but i have no choice they make me do it and it's just like it's weird like they're making the underage girl kiss all the guys. It's just some Dan Schneider shit. Yeah, it's weird, and I like I just it makes you wonder like, did somebody ask, like, hey, can you write me in to kiss her? Because he also kissed, she also kissed um, Danny's brother, hmm. um, who was also he also dated Laura Prepon, who plays Donna. He dated. Her? He dated her. Yeah. So going back to the culture on set of that 70s show. So Chrissy retweeted a post on Twitter of someone saying, quote, it was a journalist saying Ashton and Danny always treated Topher badly. Topher has never liked Danny. I learned this doing my early reporting on the then allegations, now convic- conviction against Danny. She added to that by saying, Who this Chrissy? is Chrissy now adding to what the reporter said, saying that Topher was bullied by Danny and isolated by most of the cast because Danny's like a cult leader. Danny hated Topher because Topher didn't bow to Danny like his other young castmates. I love Topher. I, if I so much as said hi to Topher, I would be giving a scolding and then ignored by Danny. It broke my heart. He was the only guy on that set with integrity and moral compass. That's my experience. I was there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and they always made it seem like Topher was the odd one out. Mm-hmm. Like he was the... Right? Because of the reunions or whatever, like the cast w- would get together. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't be there. 
Yeah. So now it kind of makes sense because like, mm-hmm. he was bullied by him. And if everyone looked up to Danny, then... Yeah. So after she posted all these clips to her Instagram stories and followed it with... She followed it with another statement. I don't know what angers me more. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis writing letters on behalf of their convicted serial rapist friend in an effort to get him a lesser sentence. Quotation... Uh, parentheses where I know he would reoffend should that have happened or how they historically how how they're historically bad actors in my opinion Ashton Kutcher should be nowhere near victims he's a fraud and it's interesting she says that because as we know Ashton Kutcher has um, a foundation dedicated to the like human trafficking yeah like preventing anti-human trafficking stuff um, which is crazy but here's where she gets even more crazy. So going back to the first post that Chrissy posted about mm-hmm. their their letters, she mentioned a date. She said, um, February of 2001. That's actually the day. Let me tell you what happened. Um, February of 2001 is the day when Ashton Kutcher arrived to pick up a woman named Ashley Ellerin for a date. But she didn't answer the door because she had already been stabbed to death 47 times by an accused serial killer, Michael Gar- Gargiulo, or the otherwise known as the Hollywood Ripper. What? Yeah. Crazy shit. Don't read ahead. <laughs> Hold sorry, on. Sorry. Slow your roll. Going, going. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, right? What? I was like, what the fuck? And then it's just crazy. All the shit that she said, like... I was there. Do you not remember I was there? You got the he got the phone call. So she's alleging that when that happened, he reached out to Danny and called him and asked him for advice on what he should do. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So here's what happened. Ashton claims that he he was supposed to go on a date with Ashley Ellerin. Mm-hmm. He arrived to her house, but the security gate was unlocked, so he drove in. And he had been late for the date because he was previously um, at a friend's house watching the Grammys, he said. And so he was late. So he thought that she was mad at him for some reason, like for being late. So he was she wasn't answering his phone calls and he knocked on the door. She didn't answer. And I guess he like tried to open the door. But I'm guessing that it was locked because he didn't say that he went in the house. Those are not his words. What he said was that he looked through the window and he saw what looked like uh, spilt wine on the floor and he figured that she was out with her friends that night so they were drinking and that she spilt wine on the floor and he was like whatever she's mad at me and he left mm-hmm. that's that's his story so when he learned that Ashley had been murdered the next day that's when he reached out to police and said that he was there because he was freaking out that his fingerprints were on the doorknob mm-hmm. and he didn't want to be tied to it and he was freaking out <sighs> now bear with me So Chrissy has a friend named Aaron Smith Levin who posted a YouTube video talking about what really happened that night, according to him. I don't know. I don't know how he knows this, but he's not he never alleged anything. He's saying this is what happened for a fact. And that's obviously a big claim. He can get sued for that. You you know what I mean? Like, Mm. it's crazy. So he is Chrissy's friend. So, I mean, that is a way for him to know some stuff. So I don't know, but this is just what I'm reporting on. Okay, I did my research and this is what I found. So he posted a video seven months ago saying that um, Ashton, this is what Aaron is saying that happened. Ashton Kutcher walks into the house that night and he sees her dead on the floor, covered in blood. He walked out. He sat in his car for an hour, freaking out and called his team on what he should do. He didn't call the police immediately. He was freaking out. And so he called his team. His team allegedly told him not to call the police so that his name wouldn't be tied to the murder. Because at the time he had been doing that 70s show for a few years. So he they didn't want his name to be tied to that because they figured that would be the only thing that he'd be known for. He'd just be like someone that could have done this murder or whatever. Mm. So obviously I, I see where they're coming from. But at the same time, someone was murdered. Like you need to report that immediately. After speaking with his team, um, Aaron Smith alleges that Ashton called Danny Masterson, which is the same thing that Chrissy said earlier, which checks out saying that I was there. You know, you called me that night. Do you remember? Um, And on top of that, Aaron alleges that Ashley's team told him to go to a party that he was supposed to take Ashley to. So, So Aaron is saying that 
that um, Ashton's team told him to go to the party that he was supposed to go with Ashley to. Mm. So like he had like a like an alibi, alibi. like he wasn't, you know, to just go on with his day. Aaron Smith also said that it would have been impossible for Ashton Kutcher to see the red wine stains on the carpet from the window because where the murder took place, you had to physically go inside the house. Like I assume it was like near a bathroom or something mm-hmm. and you had to go inside and and see it. Wow. So so it doesn't line up. It doesn't line up and he's saying that that police knew that he lied obviously cuz you can't see from the window. So he's saying that police knew that he lied and because of that um um my, the killer, the Hollywood Ripper was able to kill again. He killed somebody else after the murder of Ashley Ellerin and so he, the Aaron Smith was like blaming Ashton Kutcher saying that if he had come forward and not like messed with the storyline or whatever that the guy would have been caught sooner and he wouldn't have killed somebody else um but yeah so not only were the lights off in the house but you had to go inside to see where the body the crime scene was and um I already said that and his YouTube video is still up um we won't get into it because it's like 17 minutes long but that's basically the gist of it and it's crazy so um apparently ashton kutcher has ties with the lapd and the cia because of the work that he does with the anti-human trafficking stuff um but also they're saying that like during that time the lapd was covering up a lot of stuff and so it would have been easy allegedly for them to cover that up for him as well Hmm. um he's not alleging the aaron smith guy he's not alleging that ashton kutcher was the murderer but he's saying that like he lied and he fucked up and now a lot of people are saying that Ashton Kutcher's human rights activism may not be exactly what it seems maybe it's like a front so that he seems like this really awesome guy because it's the truth like when you when you hear about oh Ashton Kutcher's doing this anti-human trafficking organization like it's like oh my god he's an amazing guy yeah. you know who like what celebrity is doing that he must be a great person so I'm not saying that that's the truth, that it is a front or whatever, but it is suspicious. It does take your eyes away from him thinking that he can do anything wrong, you know? And that's what people are saying on the streets. Chrissy is still actively publishing on Instagram. All this has been happening over the past couple of days, by the way. And the la- I haven't checked today, but the last thing that I saw um, was that she she's angry. She has every right to be. Um, her most recent story says that she is no longer going to lie down and take the lander, the slander and lies and is planning to quote unquote out them all. Bro. She's, yeah. I, what are you even thinking? I I just, I I just spilled a lot of shit for you. Yeah. It's like a lot. I told you, I fucking told you. I was like, it is not just the character statements like it's a lot a lot a lot a lot she's been doing a lot of notes app stuff um where she like writes something the last thing she put was this is it y'all want to ask ashton kutcher if he remembers that orchestrated meeting between himself january jones laura perpon and me that took place in my danny masterson's living room in 1998 i know the secrets your role model keeps hashtag hidden cameras I don't know. I don't even know what. Well, what does that even mean? Like, Bro. and this is the the sure picture she she's so saying. She, someone put out them all, and she put, "I plan on it." Wow. So That's crazy. she means business. I'm here for I it. I wonder what like secrets she's gonna just uncover. Uncover right now. I'm interested to see what where this goes if she continues to. No doubt. Yeah. So we'll, I guess we'll keep you updated on that. Um, but that is all I have planned for today's episode. <laughs> I know that that was a lot. This is probably going to be a very long one. We've been probably recording for almost two hours now. Yeah. Dang. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, yeah. Shit, man. It's a lot of heavy stuff. Shit balls. Sorry. Holy shit, fuck yeah, balls. Yeah, that's what I was getting. Holy shit, fucking balls, A. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. What's up with her lately? Uh, well, she got a divorce. Yeah, you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
is doing. <laughs> you know I know all the tea. I be staying up to date with all that stuff. Um. Yeah, let's cut it off here though, because I know I it's go. a definitely and long it's really one. I know. I'm gonna have to take. I'm it. gonna have fun editing this one. Oof. But yeah, we'll leave you with that. Um. But thank you for joining this week's episode. <laughs> Crazy, 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 crazy stuff. Um, we will see you next week. Love you. Bye. Peace.